Every gemstone has a story, whether that's the story of how it was mined or how it was set in the jewelry. But today we're going to follow the story of how it was cut with this beautiful golden heel door. So the first step in any cutting journey is to decide what shape the stone's going to be, usually based on the shape of the rough, though today I had a specific design in mind that I wanted to use, so I've grinded off the rough edges and now I'm dopping the stone with red dopping wax in order to attach the preformed gemstone into the faceting machine so that I can precisely place the facets and create a beautiful design that will also shine and really let the stone show its natural beauty. So here I've got everything lined up and I'm starting to make my, my first shape. I'm basically using the outline shape of the rough and guiding my own will towards making this seven-sided outline, which is what I want the stone to look like. So I have it close enough on the really rough lap and I'm switching over to a finer lap so I can get really smooth, crispy outlines and I'm gonna balance the whole outline along with the first step, but oh, there's a little problem, a little hole. So I gotta get that out. I have to cut everything a little bit deeper. There it's deeper, but the hole's still there a little bit, so maybe I'm gonna have to cut in a little bit more. We don't want to leave any imperfections in the gem, so I've started to cut everything to the same level. Basically, the hardest step in the beginning of gemstone faceting is the balancing. So here I'm using a loop gauge to help me balance. I want to make sure every side is exactly the same millimeter length. In this case, it was 4.1. Meeting with the girdle facets, it's a very nice uniform shape. And now I get to go ahead and go to my next steps, which are going to be these little triangles that break up everything. So you can see the triangle growing. As I cut more and more, the facet gets bigger and bigger until there it's met the girdle and that's as big as it needs to go. So now I'm ready to go on to the next ones. So that one's just starting to come in. And as I cut it a bit deeper, I'm just cutting a little bit looking, cutting a little bit looking, and eventually it gets as big as it needs to go. Till there. So it's hard to imagine what the final stone will look like at this point. We've got a couple different tiers of facets. They're all in different sizes. Once you get a whole row of facets and a whole tier, you're starting to get more of an idea about what it's gonna become. So now I finished this tier and we can start to see an almost flowery. Oh, wait, one more to go. Okay, let's cut that one, starting to come and a little bit more cutting and there it is a sort of a flowery look it's like uh, seven flower petals but i'm not done i have another row of facets to cut in order to create this design that i want to impose upon this natural stone so the third tier comes in you can see now it's just starting to come and meet that lower triangle where it's supposed to come and there it is so now I'm going to follow that pattern all the way around. There's the second one. And still, it, it's nebulous, right? Until you can see all of them together, they don't really make sense. They don't look the way they're really going to look until there. Oh, one more to go again. Uh, but once this one comes in, we're going to start to see the full pattern that I was trying to express here. It's, it's like a triple triangle, but it still needs a table. This is the crown of the stone, so we're going to need a way to look into it. So I need to cut in the table, which is like a window into the inside of the stone. So now you can see with a few more cuts, I've added my table. The meat points are perfectly there. And it's time to go to the next step, which is to change this velvety texture of the stone into a glassy smooth finish something that shines and radiates light in and light out so here we can see the first triangle has been polished notice the the textural difference you can see the light shining off of the 
the polished facets in a way that they don't do off of that original velvet cutting surface. And so I realized in this first facet that there was a little bit of an inclusion that was appearing. So I cut it a little bit bigger than it was meant to go to get rid of the inclusion, but now that means I'm gonna have to go around the whole stone and make all the facets bigger so that they all meet up. We don't want any of them to be bigger than their brothers and sisters next to them. So I'm going around and polishing each facet, but I'm polishing it extra long so that it all gets bigger until now the girdle line is perfectly flush. Though if you look closely, the second tier and the third tier are both too small. They look overcut right now, but I'm gonna fix that in the next step. So I start to adjust the second tier. I'm not just gonna make it bigger. I'm actually gonna stretch the angle down a little bit uh, so I don't have to do so much work in order to put the whole thing back together. So I'm going around and polishing that middle tier, those middle triangles, and making them bigger and also taller so that they come down and reach the girdle point exactly where I want them to be. So here we can see I've got all of those second tiers done. And all I need to do, oh, one left. So let's go, we'll finish that one. And then we can go on and do our final third tier. Yeah, now everything's starting to look balanced. So there's just that third, those little triangles at the top. I need to polish those in and adjust the angle just slightly so that they all meet perfectly at the table without having to make the table much bigger. Making the table bigger at this point is a little bit too much work. It takes a while and it's more time than I'm willing to commit at this point. So now the first couple of little triangles at the top are starting to come in and and it ended up that I did have to overcut the, the top of them a little bit. But if I do them all exactly the same, so there's that little line in between the facets instead of having a perfect nice meet point. So if I, if I make them all overcut the same amount, then when I bring the table in, I make it a little bit bigger and it will clean up all of those overcut points at the same time. So this is fine. It's not that much extra. So there's our final step before I do the table. So now when I cut, when I polish the table, it's just gonna grow a little bit and it's gonna hit all of those little stars at exactly the same time. So this one's almost done, but there were still some little scratches on there. So I'm gonna go back and polish a little bit more. And starting to get there, but still needs a final fineness. And then the final step of the crown is to polish the girdle facets. I don't need to polish them all the way down, just enough to where when I cut in the bottom, what's left will be polished. So you can see it's nice and clear. So now I need to heat up the stone, take it off of the wax. And here we can see one side's cut, finished, polished, but the bottom side's all preform. And notice how the stone looks red, even though it's yellow, because the, the red wax on the bottom starts to shine through the stone and make it look like it's a different color than it actually is. So now I'm going to do a glue transfer. So I've got some super glue on that dop and I'm just using my eye to center it and balance it so that I can start cutting the second side. So I go back to my 600 grit cutting lap, I align the stone, and now I have to start cutting in the pavilion side and I need to make sure that my girdle's not too thin. So I'm looking at the girdle right now to see how thick it should be and then I'm bringing in the second one right here. So I'm gonna make that one a bit bigger so the girdle gets smaller, and then I'm gonna try and make the girdle line. There's the second one. Now, now it has to go all the way around, so I'm gonna to have to cut each one of those seven sided parts and just let the whole stone connect so that you've got a perfectly straight girdle line around the outside of the seven sided stone. So a bit more cutting and then I'm gonna have that perfect balance that I'm looking for. It takes a bit of hand-eye coordination and the loop to really make sure that it's all perfectly worked out. And this stone you can see right here is gonna give me maybe a little bit of a headache because there was a, a part of the stone that just wasn't as deep as the rest. It's a little bit flatter. So I'm gonna have to make sure that my pattern can actually work around that. So I'm putting in these 
long, tall triangles that would break up the other facets that I made, but here's that, that bad part again, so we can see that the, the stone doesn't really finish right there, so I'm, I'm adjusting all the angles to try to close that rough spot where you can still see the red wax. This isn't a good thing, but I know how to manipulate the design, and I've got just enough height for the angles that this material needs to still be able to reduce, reduce the angles, but also not, not make a window. I want to make sure that I'm hitting certain certain angles in order to reflect the light back when the stone's done. So I have to be very careful at this point that I don't make it too shallow, too flat, because then, yeah, it's not going to work. So this whole time for this stone, I'm kind of fighting that that spot. I'm, I'm adding other facets, but then I'm going to maybe have to adjust them a little bit once I see how it all comes together. Because this this design is so built around kind of a perfect symmetry. I'm, I'm not quite sure how it all looks until all the facets are there. So I'm just cutting them in roughly to see how they look around that little flat hole. And then I'm kind of custom adjusting just three these three facets to try to close the gap, but not mess up my pattern too much. It wasn't a perfect execution, but I, I didn't I didn't stress about it too much because I knew that once the stone was finished, you wouldn't be able to tell. So now I'm, I'm happy with what I've done. I've switched to the polishing lap and just starting to polish in the those big triangles because I'm trying to still see how this uh, little, little mistake part, it's not really a mistake, but it's just a adaption to the natural shape of the stone. And I'm, I'm just trying to edit it still. You know, even in the polishing step, we still have the power to manipulate the angles of the facets and to stretch things and move things around. So I'm happy with where it's going now. I've got all the, all the central kite-shaped facets polished, and now I'm going to go back and polish the, the base triangles because I'm, I'm happy that my little edit, my, my manipulation worked. And so now I'm just going to kind of put all the puzzle pieces together and, and make it all make it all fit together. So I want nice meat points, no scratches or anything like that. So here we can see most of those first tier facets are done. There's still a couple frosty ones. And so I'm just going around and pre-polishing and polishing each one so that they're nice and shiny. And I'm looking closely with my loop each time I pick it up to make sure that the meat points are perfect. And so now the first two tiers are done and I just have those tiny little stars at the top, those, those long skinny ones that make the seven-sided star. So those ones I don't even need the outside ring, they're so small I can polish them straight on the 60,000 grit, which is my finest grit. And so I'm starting to polish them in and just go around. The two that were around the shallow part of the stone, I'm going to do those last because they need special angles, but you can see by the end you can't even really tell without looking very, very closely where that spot was. So. Now time to take the stone off the dop and see how I did. So I heat up the dop so that the glue softens and I'm just going to let that cool down for a second and then put it into the acetone. The acetone will melt any wax or glue that's still on the stone. I spray it off with alcohol and then see how I did. I'm happy. I call this design hex, like a magical spell, but it's a good hex. It's not uh, an evil hex. I'm putting a spell on the world to maybe make things a little brighter, more positive for the wearer of this stone, and hopefully for you, the viewer of this video. So thanks for going on this journey with me, and I'll see you here next time on the Gem Cutter's Craft.